Hi guys, welcome back. Now, hopefully you're getting on really nicely with the strumming pattern and our two chords and you're putting those two together. Now, what we're gonna be doing today is learning two more chords. You'll find very quickly at a beginner's stage that I'm just gonna throw new chord at you, new chord at you, new chord at you, because there's so many we need to learn um, to make sure that we can actually start playing through songs. So make sure with every new lesson where I teach you chords, you do go away and get them really thoroughly learned before carrying on. Okay, or at least learn well enough as I'm going to explain in the lesson. Now, the two chords we're going to be learning today are E major and A major. Now the really good news is that these are very similar to the E minor and A sus2. So actually, we're halfway there already. So let me talk you through how they are and how you play them. The E major. Well, the easiest way to put the E major together is to do your E minor chord and add your first finger on the first fret of the G string. So remember, elephants and donkeys grow the G string, and it's the first fret. And that would give you this. Okay. So I'll actually walk you through exactly what fingers are where, just in case you can't quite see. So I've got my second finger on the second fret of the A string. I've got my third finger on the second fret of the D string. And I've got my first finger on the first fret of the G string. And then I've got an open B and an open E string, and of course down here an open E string. Okay, so there's your E major chord. Now again, make sure your thumb's nice and at the back of the neck, okay, so it's nice and flat to allow that your wrist comes round like so, and therefore you get a nice bridge with all of these fingers. Remember this part of the finger, this joint needs to be nice and bent to make sure that the bridge is being created. And we should have all six strings nice and clear. The first thing that normally goes wrong with this one is that you can't hear the G or the B string. And normally that's because this finger here is blocking this finger, okay? You might just find that the bit of padding, the bit of fat at the bottom of the finger here, um, is just slightly touching the G string underneath. So if that's the case, just bring that wrist around even more to create even more of a bridge. Keep adjusting as you go, it's different for everyone's fingers, so you just need to kind of, a bit of trial and error on these. And the same thing will be happening with the G string here, blocking the B string. So again, just make sure that you're adjusting that. So spend a bit of time making sure you can do the E major. Now, the next chord is A major. Now this one's tricky. And it's tricky because we have to, as you can see here, we have to put one of the fingers quite a way back in the fret, whereas ideally we'd want it over here, okay? So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to try and do this chord, okay? Just because some people's fingers just simply won't fit into there, others will have no problem, it doesn't matter. Now, the A major chord, basically you've got your first finger on the D string second fret, you've then got your second finger right underneath on the G string, and your third finger underneath that on the B string. They're all in the second fret. And then we've got an open E string at the top and an A string. And we don't deliberately don't play the E string as, as much as possible, try and avoid it as much as possible. Now, this is pretty tricky. And, and again, the common problems here is that this first one is not ringing out properly. And that's because it's right back here. So you need to push down almost twice as hard as you do the other two to make sure it's ringing out as clearly. The other problem, which you almost heard me do there, is that the high E string is not ringing out. And again, that will just be because this third finger is just slightly blocking it here. They're the main things that normally kind of go wrong when we first start doing these chords. Now, if you find that horribly uncomfortable and just cannot get those fingers in place, then what I would highly recommend is changing to this, okay? So here, basically, I've replaced the first finger with the second finger and then put the third and fourth fingers on in that order instead. The simple reason is that the little finger's, you know, smaller, so you've got a bit more chance of fitting all three in. And that's absolutely fine if you'd rather play it like that. And if even that is too much for you and you just, just these fingers will just not fit in like that, then I guess one other way is you can actually just take any one of your fingers, really, I guess the second finger is my most ideal one, and just flatten it against all three strings. Now, very typically, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna sacrifice the high E string, 
okay? If you're very bendy with the fingers, then you can always try and bend at this joint going upwards like a ski slope, and you might just get the high E string. But I think that's really something a bit too much for this lesson. So really, that's the last resort, where you just flatten one finger against all three. Okay, try to do that or that for this, at this point in your learning. So we've got E major and A major. These are the two chords I want you to practice. Now, once you've spent a bit of time on those, so I would highly recommend you know, going away, just practicing them, or pausing the video just to practice them for a good 10, 15 minutes. Then we're gonna try and put them in a chord chart. So this can be anything you want. I'm just gonna give you some examples. So I'm gonna get my drum machine back on, and I'm gonna go for my 60 BPM again, okay? And I'm gonna start it now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice all four chords that I've got now. I've got an E minor, an E major, an A sus2, and an A major. And I'm just going to do two bars on each chord, okay? Just in any order that I want to, just to practice it. Now, as well as that, I'm actually going to try and do my rhythm pattern again, okay? So I'm going to try and combine all the elements here, okay? So here's an example, and then you can do whichever chord chart you want to do. It's totally up to you, as long as you're practicing all the chords. So here we go. After four, one, I'm going to start on E major, three, four, with strumming. Let's change to E minor, so that's a nice easy change, just take the one finger off. Now I'm going to try and go to A major, see if you can get to that on time. It's going to be pretty tricky. Then I'm going to change to A sus two. Nice, actually. I like it. This is how songs are written. Now we're going to go back to the start. E major. Okay. And so on and so forth. So you can put those chords together in any order you want. I'd highly recommend getting out a piece of paper or something and just writing down A sus 2 slash 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 slash. So you do the bars and then the next chord. So you're, so you're still reading off a chord chart. Um, and then you actually just try and put them together with the strumming pattern. And that is really going forward the best way to practice when you learn new chords. So have some fun with that. And next time we'll talk about really good practice habits before we take everything one stage further to the next level.